friends, it's Lane with Crafty Life Mom. I am standing in front of my dream box and I am excited to share with you everything today about the dream box from delivery to setup and how I organized all the things inside. So stick around because this is going to be a good one. So now I'm going to give you a tour of my dream box and how I organized it. I am absolutely in love with the way that it turned out. It did take me about a day or two to finally organize everything and I couldn't be happier with how this actually turned out and how this looks. So I purchased a couple of different coordinating scrapbook papers and actually placed them in the inside front of each clear bin tote to kind of give it that farmhouse glam look that you see here. I love the way this looks. I love the flowers. I love the farmhouse buffalo check, and it just makes it so inspiring. I actually plan to leave my dream box open so that when I walk into the room, I'm immediately inspired by it. Um, we are currently building a wall on my dining room so that this will be my full-time craft office and I couldn't be happier with the way that this dream box turned out and having it wide open, inspiring, and you'll be able to see a peek of it through the French doors that we're adding onto the room. So it's just gonna be calling for me to come and craft in this space. So this is just a wide look of the dream box completely open, and you can see kind of how I have some things already organized, but we're gonna go ahead and go in for a closer look. 
So on the right side panel, I have all of these little round bins that actually come with the dream box. You get 16 of them. And I decided to put all 16 in this right panel door opening. And so you can see here, that is exactly what I've done. I've got three rows of them at the top with all of my different kinds of buttons. I have my glam kind of buttons here. Not very many, but I do have some glam buttons. And then I have some pinks and different like wood buttons. There's flowers, some orange ones, just some miscellaneous buttons. And then I have this um, gold and black pearl type buttons. A lot of these came from different pieces of jewelry and things from my grandmother um, that she left to me. So I kind of just have that little stash there. And then in the end, I have a kit for making my own cloth buttons. So I kind of have the whole first row of containers dedicated to buttons. And then I have this little golden arrow. I just love this because I have craftylifemom.com and it's just a passion of mine and it just reminds me to go follow your arrow. Um, so Crafty Life Mom, I believe, is that. And I just like the little reminder. I just have it sitting on top of these bins. I might put it back up on the shelf, but right now it sits real pretty. And so in here, I have all of my elastics. I have my neutrals my pinks and teals. And then in these bins, I have my flowers and my pom-poms that I have for all of my crafting. And then down here, I have things to make hair bows and little bows and glitter bows and then some bells. And then what's interesting is this is the um, little storage that you get for like pins or little doodads. And on this side, I just have an extra charging um, cord for any of my electronic stuff, uh, some little adhesive. This is the repair that comes with the dream box. If you slightly nick your cabinet or something, you actually have a little repair kit. And then I just have my um, fabric cutter here. And that's because to the right of this sits my embroidery machine. And so this is kind of the overflow of tools that I would use for doing embroidery work. And because I do a lot of embroidery, these are actually cute little um, zip drives that I just have hanging here so that I can put all of my files on. If you see, it comes, if I can do it left-handed, it comes out right here. And it's actually a zip drive. Super cute. And so I just store all of that here. Then I have some paper clips and clamp clips some hot glue fingers, and then I have one empty to put something else in. And then my cordless glue gun and my glue gun charger for the battery. Okay, so moving on to the lovely totes. I love this, this is my favorite part. Um, like I said, I took these scrapbook papers and I actually cut them down to size. They are four and a half by uh, four to kind of make this square shape. And that's for the shoebox sizes. So in the very top, what I have up here is all of my extra glue guns and my long glue sticks that fit that glue gun and the glue gun that I have down in the door panel. Then to the right of it, I have all other adhesives, all other glues, sticker making things, Mod Podge, E6000, all my other glues are there, so they are ready. Moving down in this tote, I have all the little glue sticks in the front. And what's really neat about this is that these totes come with these little dividers and you can arrange them how you want. You can actually have two to a tray or you can have one. So I just did one, so I have all my little glue sticks and these are the short ones that are either fat or I have skinny ones in here as well. And then back here I have my staple gun and my staple gun staples. I don't use this a lot, but there are times where I need it and it's like I like to know where it's at. So I've got it right back here behind my glue sticks. No specific reason as to why, it's just the way I did it. And then moving on, this is what I like to call 
my stash of things for all of my crafting. So this is kind of like my chipboard box crafts, my um, cardboard type of things that I might use to make different projects. Then here I have some of the faux vinyl leather. I have rolls for different projects that I have to make that I have not yet made. And then over here I have all of my scrap vinyl um, that is not adhesive vinyl or heat transfer vinyl. This is actually a fabric felt backing vinyl. And so I use a lot of these for sewing different projects, embroidery work, that sort of thing. Um, glitter vinyl is what I have here. And it's just a scrap bin of all the pieces I have left over from prior projects. I try to use that bin first before I go cutting a new piece off my roll. Just a little tip. And then in here I have some of, actually it's kind of miscellaneous, but I have all of my silhouette um, pens. I don't use these often, so it's in this in this little bin here. And then this is just some nifty gifty boxes that I have just for quick grab. Like if I have a gift that I wanna make, I can just get one of these, fold it, and it is ready to go. I plan to add some tissue paper in here just so I have a quick ready-made gift wrapping station. Then over here, I have all of my rosette um, elastics. So in here, I have um, like these rosettes that come in a strip. A lot of times people make these with hair bows. I bought a ton of this stuff when my daughter was still wearing like the baby styled hair bows, but then I turned them into making like elastic bands or like your planner. So I have all of my elastic lace in here and then all of my rosettes in the pack. All of this, look, ooh, that one's so pretty. Anyway, I'll get inspired while we go through. <laughs> um, I have that all in here. Then I'm moving on to the 12 by 12 um, totes and these pieces of paper, if you're wondering, I just kept the paper at 12 inches and then it's three inches tall. So in this bin, I have all of my greenery and my moss for like home decor projects, for creating things that are like farmhouse style. I have a nice little stash of greenery and moss. So it's just here when I need it. And then down here I have all of the like white and black, like buffalo check. Um, I plan to add some fur to this bin for making gnomes. I love making gnomes recently or lately. And then in here, I have all of the re ribbons. Um, most of these ribbons are the neutral ribbons that are for farmhouse or seasonal. So I just finished Valentine's. You can see like I have the red there and I'm getting ready to move into the spring and Easter type of projects. So these are the latest ribbons I've purchased and I've just kind of added them here to the seasonal little bin. And then down below is all my other ribbons that I've just collected <laughs> over the years. I have lots, a little, oh, that one's kind of getting smashed. And then I believe I have another drawer of larger, like deco mesh and fat ribbons, wide, extra wide ribbons in here. So I use those from time to time. And moving on down, this is all of my wood type of goodies. So I have little rolling pins, I have wood letters. A lot of these came from the Dollar Tree. I have wood little knobs here. They have like one little hole on the side so you can kind of use it on the end of a project. I like to use these for making um, wooden noses for my gnomes. So kind of have those there. And then I kind of have some kids stuff in the back. My kids ask for crafts all the time. So I kind of have like some googly eyes and some clothespins so that they can make some, some crafts. Then I have a little bit of extra wood stuff going on down here. This is just something I made and took apart. I have a future craft coming up that I'm going to share out of those blocks. Moving on down, this is just an empty one. I do have like two or three that are empty um, on down here so I can fill them up with more crafts. So there is the right side and then I'm moving on to the skinny shelves right here. So for the skinny shelves, what I've done is I've kind of added in materials that kind of relate to the bin 
next to them but would fit better in a skinny shelf. That's just how I decided to organize it and it might even fit to something to the left but for the most part these items and these shelves align with what's to the right and I'll give you an example. So I think the first one is just empty because I don't know I guess I could put my glue sticks up there that might be kind of helpful. I could probably do that now that I'm organize it. See, I'm always tweaking it and always improving it. That's the beauty of the dream box. So up here is my adhesives. This is my duct tapes, which kind of goes with the adhesives being here. And then this is my clear tapes also going with the adhesives up here. And then moving on down, I have some sewing items. These are like a miniature sewing kit, little pins. I don't use this often, but it's handy to have. So I like having it in this little skinny Try it. if I need it, it's right there readily available. Now remember my bin of scraps. Look, here's all the vinyl rolls. They fit really nicely, this glitter vinyl. They fit really nicely in these skinny tubes. So I have them kind of by colors. Like I have my cools, my blue, my silver, and then I have like some of my pinks and reds, like my warmer colors. And then of course I have like some neutrals, which is like a champagne gold, or like there's a light gray on the bottom, all of that right there. Then I have moving into like the kids stuff, pipe cleaners or for like any kind of floral projects because I have all of my ribbons here. This is great for tying different floral projects. So I have all of the neutral colors and then I have all my black pipe cleaners there. Um, these I believe are kind of empty, but then look, I have my wood lined up with the wood stuff. And down here, I have some more twine. And the very bottom, I have the, um, it's like a tagger for like if I have shirts that I make, sometimes I do markets that will allow me to just put a little price tag on it. So that is the skinnies on the right side. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to uh, the table and just kind of showing you how they've built in this unique system right now I have it at a counter height, which is super nice Great for standing and crafting But you can also make this down into a flat table which you saw in the earlier part of my video So now I'm just going to give you an example of how easy it is to adjust I am doing this one-handed so bear with me I'm gonna lean onto the table here, but you have these little locks here that kind of keep the table in place. There is one on both sides, which is super nice. It keeps it nice and secure so it doesn't fall. And then you can see here, this is the little um, brackets or um, what do you call hinges that allow you to adjust the table. So if you want it to be regular height, all you have to do is just kind of pull it outwards towards you and it will flatten all the way down. But on this is the adjustable legs, and I can't even begin to explain how nice this is. So all you have to do is just push this button and push the peg leg in to adjust it to normal table height. And it should just lock, see? Oh, right there, sorry. And you can do the same on both sides and then bring the table down so I'm folding in one leg right there. And then I'm going to pull this one. Make sure you pull a little pin and fold the other leg in right here all the way. And then I'm just going to fold the entire table down. I'm doing it nice and slow. See there? And now it's down. And that's what it looks like completely folded down. Pretty cool. Here's a peek of me using the table at both the counter height and the regular height so that you can see the functionality of how the table works. And I just really love this. It's super functional and makes for great flexibility when crafting.
Okay, so I'm going to move on to the bottom of my dream box. This is what's actually just below the table. I picked up these white bins from the Dollar Tree and I just really like how they make everything super organized. So underneath here in these first two bins, let me see if I can get down here, I have all of these bags of jewelry, um, things that just need to be sorted. They need to go to a home. And so they're just here. Sometimes I used to take beads with me on the go and try to make jewelry. And so that's just what some of this is. It's just little kits to go that I never really unpacked. So I didn't want to get rid of them, but I do want to store them. They're not my most used things, so that's why I have them down below. And that goes for everything that's down here. It's the stuff I don't use that often, but you never know when you might need it, so it's down here. So I used to also make lots of buttons and pocket mirrors. And so down here I have what's called a button maker machine and all of the supplies to make the buttons in these two bins. So that's real handy if I decide to make some buttons. They're usually for like party favors or bridal party showers and things like that. Then up here, these are some craft projects and types of crafts that I do on occasion, like using rhinestones for decorating shirts and aprons and that sort of thing. So this is actually a rhinestone kit the rhinestone genie that I purchased haven't used it yet but I do have it here ready for me when I'm ready to go back to making type of rhinestone projects it's just not that popular right now and it's not that it won't be I just I'm not into it so I know I will be and that's why I have it to come back to then I have right here my Sizzix this is a texture um, machine that you can run different papers through. I use it to run strips of leather. I wet the leather and then run it through here with all of the different texture cards that I've purchased or embossing cards. You can do it for embossing like this to kind of make the different patterns on the leather strips. And then the leather strips, which I have some left over here, I make into bracelet cuffs with snaps and little beads and that sort of thing. So I just kind of have that there with this little guy sitting in front of it. And then over here to the left, I have, this is a bead tray. I don't necessarily use these anymore, but this helps you gauge how long your necklace is going to be. So I just kind of have it sitting here. And then in these two tubs, I have all of these Martha Stewart punches. They are for card making. I used to make a ton, a ton of cards. I haven't in a while, but it's probably because I just batch make the cards and then I use them in a card box. And once I go through them, like for birthdays, Christmas, um, celebrations like anniversaries or sorry cards when someone had a death or a loss. I make a bunch of different cards all at once and then I put them into my little file system and then when they're done I come back and I make more. So I don't use it often but when I do I have them here ready. So this is the underneath of my table. Okay, so now I'm moving on to the left side of the dream box. This is the left panel that opens up. And at the very top, I have all of my Waverly chalk paint. I used to have a variety of paints, but I have to be honest and say, when it came to organizing the dream box, I realized that I used a lot of these paints more than I do any other craft paint. So I did actually try to like purchase all of the different colors that I might use and just kind of line them up here. What I like about these is that you can put two in a row here. So it's actually doubled up on this. So I can get, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, nine across, but I can get 18 in one tray. So I can get a total of 36 there. Then what I have here is I love my create word. I actually found this like at TJ Maxx or somewhere and I've had it sitting on top, but I really just love the different colors. It doesn't really go with the orange and the green with my flowers and farmhouse theme here, but when I put my washi tape underneath it, I just really liked the way that this looked. It's very inspiring. So I'm putting it there and I just kind of didn't have an extra row for washi tape but I left the rod here in case I decided to display more. These are just some of my favorites 
And so I, and they're kind of seasonal too, so I kind of just like to have them displayed. So I'm gonna go ahead and share with you what's in the bins that go with that. So up top, I have all of my planner covers. I'm an Erin Condren planner girl. I love Erin Condren. And then in this bin, it's kind of heavy. I don't know if you recognize this, but it's a little planner girl. It has all of my planner stickers and sticker books in it. So you can see here. So I just pulled this tub down and now I can plan my week with all of my planner goodies. And I've consolidated my collection down to these two tubs plus what's in the back of my planner. I also like to do a little bit of um, painting and Bible journaling. So because I have the paints here, I have all of my paint foam brushes and all of my paint brushes here. So they are ready to go. And then I just clean them and put them back into my bin when they are done. I kind of keep them drying in the laundry room and then once they're dry, I put them back in here. And then over here, I have some chalk paint. I did do chalk couture for a little bit. And so I kept all of my pastes. I have all of those here to still use. I don't know how long they last, but hopefully it's been a while. And then, like I said, I like to do a little bit of Bible journaling. So I have all of my watercolor and colored pencils, my stamps that I use for like illustrated faith, my devotional books here, all for that for within the Bible journaling craft that I like to do. Now I'm gonna be moving on. So what I have here is just some wood beads. And the reason I have the beads over here instead of on the other side is because down below in all of these totes is all of my jewelry making supplies. So I used to be really huge into jewelry making and selling them with Zulily. And I've kind of gotten away from it, but I am recently getting into stringing beads and making garlands for home decor. So I've kind of got those going on together here. And in here, I just have my punches um, for like earring cards, if I wanna make an earring card, or like the round disc. Sometimes you use these when you make a, like a personalized charm. So I just kinda have those here because they do relate to jewelry making in that sense. Um, and then on down in every single one of these trays is all of my beautiful beads. I love all of these beads. I actually consolidated them down into these trays, which these little divider trays you can actually get from, um, you know, to go with your dream box. They don't come with it, but you can add these on. And I'll just show you a couple of these trays. So in this one, I have like all of my birthstones for jewelry making, the Swarovski crystals. You can see those. I have here this is for like making personalized little discs you can see they're like the one inch circles a box of charms more beads I told you I had a lot of beads lots and lots and lots of beads down here I have all of my colored pearls and what's really great is I can just pull this tray out and easily just see what I have on hand to string them after the colored pearls is all of my cream and white pearls and clear beads. I absolutely love these. If you want a necklace, let me know because I definitely have the beads to make it. <laughs> and then down further, there's some more beads. Yes, there's more beads. I told you, I've done a lot of jewelry making. And more beads. These are for like big chunky bracelets. So I have those as well. And let me see, let me move down further. Oh, I did that one already. I have, these are some bead repairs. So occasionally some of my friends and family will ask me, can you repair this? And I will put it here. Um, and I have to remember to get back to it, but I do have that there. And then the bottom is all my charms. All these charms and bags and bags and bags of charms that I have bought over the years, like through wholesale suppliers when I did a ton of jewelry making. This is just what's left. So one day I will get to using all of this and creating some more jewelry goodies. So I'm gonna go back to my panel here. I do have my 
Cricut uh, Bright Pad here. This helps with we weeding out different vinyl projects. I have my little Cricut Mini Press for any quick little projects I need. And then I do have some regular paints here, but I just haven't opened them yet. They're just here to get to when I'm ready. And then right here in this little section is what I call like the most used tools section and even just above it. I use this golden pineapple set of tools. It's Cricut and Silhouette tools for any project I'm doing. Little scissors are always necessary. Big scissors for cutting things and my label maker, plus a big bottle of white chalk paint. Like this is what I go to the most. And then up here I do have some punches, hole punchers, my vinyl um, smoother, I guess that's what you would call it. And then just a little measuring like ruler tool. And so yeah, that is the entire left side panel of my dream box. Moving on to the skinny little drawers on the left side of my dream box. Again, I have these organized to what's to the left of them or what's to the right. So all of my vinyl is over here, which I'll go over in just a minute. But I have vinyl scraps of little pieces here that might be great for small projects. And then in here, this one is empty, so I have room for more scraps. Yay, I always love it when I have an empty bin. Um, up here, I have all of my embroidery floss for making tassels or whatever sort of thing. And I have all of my washi tape overflow here. Plus my little scissors for cutting the washi tape precisely. If you are a planner girl, you know why those are in here. Now if I can just get them back in. Um, then I have all of my other beads in here just for making tassels and that sort of thing. I'm starting to build a collection of beads and things for the summer. And um, just tassel garlands are one thing I'm working on to adding to my shop. Then down here I have different um, little things for making like um, keychains and that sort of thing kind of goes along with jewelry making which is all to the left here. I have some little backings or bezels for jewelry making, personalized jewelry, and all of the little keychain like components that you need to put all of those together. I used to make a ton of those, so that's why I have a lot of them. And then here I have all of my pliers and tools. These are Lindstrom's. I love these pliers. They are the best, seriously, for making pliers or for making jewelry. So I do love these. I can leave those down below because they are amazing. Even if you're not making jewelry and need pliers. And then I have my big cutter here. And wires for jewelry making, all kinds of wire, brass, silver, copper filled wire. Down here I have stringing materials for actually making stringed necklaces and that sort of thing. And like I said, these all go with the things over here to the left when it comes to jewelry making. And then lastly down here I have some leather strips and this is called a mandrel. So if you do any kind of wire work where you create rings, I used to do a lot of those. In my past, I have a, see, it's got a little sizer. Let me see the numbers. Where you can actually size the ring that you're making. So that's what's really cool about this. It's called a mandrel. If you do any kind of jewelry making. And that is the entire long strip of skinny drawers on the left hand side. All right, so now I'm moving on to the middle section drawers, which is my favorite section of the entire dream box. This is where all the magic happens for the most part. These left side of drawers is my most used vinyl drawers. I have them organized in there. I have all of my pens in this nifty little pen organizer. So this organizer is actually an additional accessory you can also purchase to go inside your dream box. And so I just have colored pencils, different markers, Sharpies, uh, fabric Sharpies, different cullings of Sharpies, like thin tips, small tips, highlighters, gel pens, everything all organized in this entire caddy. And I absolutely love it because 
on any given day, I can go in here and find exactly what I need. And I absolutely love how I know what I'm looking for. Down here in the bottom, I just have additional little tools, a little X-Acto knife, and some extra scissors. So that's what I have there. Then on the side of it, I keep all of my mats here. Um, I don't know if this is the best place for them, but I kind of just know like what I have in here. I have my silhouette scan, pick scan mat. I have some silhouette mats, my Cricut mats, and some of my most used mats all right here. So that's what I really love about this little nook. It's just like right there, front and center, ready for me to use. Then, of course, I have a little bit of radon involved in my dream box. And then I just have this cute little um, lace tote in here. I just decided to put this one there. It was kind of extra. And I just have some things in here, nothing really specific, but I just thought it was cute up there. And then over here, I have in every single one of these, all of my vinyl rolls by color. So every single thing, I have my talics. I have a drawer for scraps and sheets of vinyl. Look at all of that, la la la. Lots of vinyl. And more rolls, I'm just going through them randomly, but you get the idea. It's color coordinated rolls of vinyl. And then over here, I have different little things for um, that glitter vinyl that I make, like those little decal things and just little bins here I picked up from Michaels to kind of just organize. Here I have some embellishment. Oh wait, no, this box is more vinyl for like Aaron, Aaron kits. And then I also have like some foiling things in here. This pen isn't too organized, but I do refer to it a lot for these things. So that's kind of why they're together. Then I have in these two bins, some embellishments. I have some Christmas ones for card making or little projects that need a little bow or a little saying. Some confetti. Look at, I have all of this in here. Super cute. And then in the top three, I have all of my card making supplies. So in this one, I have all of the like envelopes and small packs of paper. And then in this one, I have scrapbook paper. I don't know if you can see that in more envelopes. And then the top, you will see loose leaf scrapbook paper and it's like the heaviest one. I don't know why I put it up top, but I have all of my scrapbook paper up there. So, that is the center section of my dream box, and I absolutely love it. Lastly, I just decided to decorate with some of these little bins. I put my yarn up there. I don't knit or crochet um, hardly, like just a little bit, but I have them up there on display just to kind of show off. And then, of course, I have my Create and this cute little flower arrangement on this box. I just really love the look of this. And I'll probably put something here, I'm not quite sure yet. And then I just have some little um, garlands and things up in that box right there. But this is my dream box space. And I am so in love with it. I hope you guys enjoyed my little tour of how I organized my entire dream box. Let me know if you're thinking about getting one and what questions you have or what you want to know. Okay guys, what did you think of the tour of my dream box? I am absolutely in love with it and I have really, really loved the way it turned out when it came to organizing it. I also really love having the scrapbook papers in front of all of my bins because it, while keeps it organized, it also allows for it to be very, Pretty. And I am so excited to finally have a space that is both feminine and inspiring when it comes to creating my crafts. So, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!